Don't cross the streams. Why? It would be bad. I'm fuzzy on the whole good bad thing. What do you mean bad? Try to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. And, you know, normally uh, during the week, Skip and Tosh and I do uh, an outside the bleed comic book review. And they're just, there wasn't another comic to review this week. So we decided to, to talk to one of our coffee supporters and, and find a topic to talk about. And this week it's going to be, you know, separating the art from the artist. Now you're wondering where Skip and Tosh is. Well, he's, he's not feeling well. So I had to find a capable replacement. And with me today, Replacing Skip and Tosh to talk about this very subject, my good friend, freelance editor, writer, the, the man behind Darkwing Duck, the comic book, Aaron Sparrow. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, yeah, fortunately, you hit me up at a time where I just I suddenly find myself with a lot of free time. I, I, I don't know why. You know, this week you, you've got more time, and you know I do appreciate that, that you're making some for me and, and taking some time to talk about separating the art from artists. Over time, my, my views on this have changed. Uh, if, if, you, if you talked to me three years ago, I would have been like, I don't support anyone that's a jerk at any time. You know, if you block people, I'm not going to support you. And, and I had like all these hard, fast rules. And I don't know. I, I don't want to be mad all the time. I don't want to have to you know, go and, and do s- social media checks on people to make sure that they're the right person. So I've definitely lack, or relaxed my views on separating the art from the artist. I, I generally, genuinely try to, to separate the two. And I think most of the time I'm able to do it. How do you feel about separating the art from the artist? Well, I'm obviously not someone who supports cancel culture. I think that's pretty well established. Uh, I think that we need to have the capacity for forgiveness for people. You know, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody says dumb things every now and then. Everybody has maybe some outdated beliefs that, uh, you know, that they just need to bring, you know, like just examine and, and bring current. So uh, I don't, uh, I don't believe in canceling people. I do believe in separating the art from the artist. However, I think there's a point where you kind of like, I understand why people don't as well, because, you know, being somebody who orders for a couple shops and who gets the messages and, and who talks to the customers directly about what they're ordering and what they're putting on their pull lists, you know, when, when you go out and you're looking oh, hey, this book just got announced. I'm not familiar with the creative team. Let me go look them up. And then you go and you find that you're blocked. I understand why customers are like, oh, well, I've never even interacted with, interacted with this uh, this professional. And they've got me pre-blocked for some reason. And then they find out that, you know, they're on a blockchain because they follow somebody else who this person deems, you know, problematic. They, I understand that natural inclination to say, well, I can't support this person. And, you know, that's their right. So while I think I'm, usually able to separate the art from the artist. I, I do understand why some people have a harder time with it. Yeah, because I've been there before. I remember when Livewire was announced, you know, at that point, you know, Valiant Comics was like my world as far as comics. I read every single Valiant comic. I love Livewire. You know, that's a that's a, such a good character. She was awesome in the in the Ninja K series at that point. And I remember when, when Valiant sends out that, that email, Livewire series, you know, first time ever, I was really excited. I go and I click on the, the creator name. I was like, who is this person? B. Ayala, never heard of her in my entire life. Certainly never interacted with her. Blocked. Like, why am I blocked? Like, I'm a huge Valiant fan. I'm always shouting out their comics. I'm always, you know, uh, signal boosting at any uh, opportunity that I can because I support Valiant Comics so much. And one of their creators is going to block me without ever talking to me. It definitely felt personal. You know, obviously, if you're a creator, you don't have to let people uh i understand why why it feels that way you know it's like you if a creator is on twitter and they are promoting themselves as the writer of these things the reason that you're going to their twitter is because you're interested in the things that they work on uh and maybe you know then once you read some of their things you become interested in their work in general maybe you don't but i understand the the compunct the, you know the, the feeling that when you go to connect with these people and you're already like prejudged you're like, why would I give these people my money? Uh, you know, I'm not going to do that. I, I absolutely understand that. I have customers who do that all the time. As a matter of fact, it happened recently with Children of the Atom. Uh, you know, we were selling the X books fairly well, not as well as we were doing the House of X, Powers of X. But, you know, the Dawn of X stuff has been okay for us. It's definitely been better than any of the X-Men stuff that's preceded it sales-wise in the last several years. But Children of the Atom got announced, and 
I, you know, so I contacted our X-Men customers, you know, just sent out a thing saying, hey, here's the new titles that are coming out. Let me know if you want to add these to your poll. And people were adding them, but nobody was choosing Children of the Atom. And one of our best customers, when he came in, I said, you know, hey, you, you know, you sure you don't want that book? It's part of this whole this whole X thing, and you're collecting everything else. And he basically said to me, like, oh, yeah, I didn't know who the creators were. So I went on Twitter and looked it up, and one of them has me blocked. And I just decided, yeah, you know what? Not going to support that. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of, tired of you know, creators acting unprofessionally especially to people that they've never even interacted with. And so there you go. There's a lost sale. It's a lost sale for Marvel. It's a lost sale for our shop. And it's not an anomaly. You know, it happens with enough people that it definitely affects the bottom line. And ultimately, the people that it hurts the most is the shops if they order those books and then people don't want to buy them because, you know, I'm not going to order any shelf copies of it for this store because nobody's interested. And I don't think I can sell any shelf copies, even though I sell every other X book. Yeah, it's crazy because she could have the – the best pitch in the world. She could be, you know, hustling every single day, getting the word out there and, and getting people and putting the right things out there to get people excited for the book. But there's a huge portion of the reader base that can't even see it because she is prejudged that they're not worthy of her time to even react, interact with her. It's, it's a crazy, very lazy, very short sighted business decision. Well, you don't even have to interact with people that you don't want to. I mean, the way that I handle the way that I handle my Twitter account is I interact with everybody who comes to me. But if I just blocked everybody who disagreed with me or who came in with, you know, a criticism or a critical opinion of something I'd done or something that I said, you just end up in this in this echo chamber and you're cutting yourself off and you're not changing anybody. You're not helping anybody and you're definitely not helping yourself or your publisher or any of the team that you work with because you're costing them money. Like I said, you know, for me personally, over time, those thresholds have kind of changed. You know, if you have me blocked, I- I'm willing to overlook it. Like Al Ewing, when he was doing um, Immortal Hulk, he's had me blocked, you know, probably for a few years now. That was a great comic book, and in, in the art by um, by Joe Bennett was just out of this world. I love the story, and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to miss out on one of the three or four best comics in the entire industry. You know, comic books are or a passion of mine. I have a a channel for it. I'm not going to miss out on that because that guy's a jerk to me. I'm going to overlook it and I'm going to read it in spite of him just because the the quality is there. And I think that, you know, for me, that decision has worked and, and I, I'm glad that I, I changed my, my mind and, and I kind of opened my horizons on there, but there are definitely other people. Like when you look at, um, Donny Cates, Mm-hmm. As far as I know, he doesn't block bot. I know he does block some people if you get out of line with him or if you talk back to him. But like, if you look at his online presence, he's kind of a, a, a entitled douchebag. Is the way that I, I see it. Like you'll see him. Um, like he was championing on Sean Gordon Murphy's uh, cancel canceling of the the cover with Doug T- uh, Tenaple. Uh, you you'll often see him chastise readers and things like that. And I don't like that. But his Venom story is just good enough that I'm willing to overlook it. But I'll tell you right now, if it wasn't quite that good, I would just drop it in, in a heartbeat just because I find him his personality annoying. Well, I guess maybe that's talent privilege. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, so if, you're, if, you're, if you're talented and you're good at what you do, you, you get a little more leeway. Uh, I think mm-hmm. the problem is, is that there's a lot of people in the industry who are not talented and who think that they can act like that. And, you know, I think that's a problem for Donnie is that he does, you know, as somebody who is very successful in the industry and who is writing stories that people enjoy, he has a responsibility, I think, to set a higher standard that maybe he's not, he's not by, you know, with his online behavior. But I think that, you know, you need to set that example for the people who are not as successful as you so that they can perhaps be more successful. You know, you need to try to teach people to deal with criticism and to deal with, uh, to deal with some of the slings and arrows that come from, you know, being somebody online. I say a lot of things on my Twitter account, but I generally interact with people in a really positive way. So I don't get, even when I say something that people disagree with or they find controversial and they come at me, I'm polite in my response to them. And it brings them around to being polite. And then we have, we generally have a nice discussion. Every now and then you'll get somebody who's just being an ass and there's not much that you can do with it. And then, you know, maybe you, uh, maybe you just say, oh, I'm done with this, or you ignore them, you mute them, or, or you make fun of them, <laughs> whichever, uh, whichever mood I'm in that day. But, you know, I think that you have a responsibility as a professional to set the bar higher than just random people on the internet under anonymous names who are coming in and insulting you. And I think that 
when you're dealing with an industry that is in the trouble the comic book industry is even before all this uh all this other nonsense started that we can't mention because you'll get demonetized uh you know even before that the industry was in trouble and i think that you just need to put your best foot forward and you need to be teaching these young people who maybe don't have the talent level to keep the audience even though they're they're being maybe an egotistical jerk and it's kind of weird, you know, with the current environment, everything is so polarized. You know, everyone's in a faction or, or no faction. And a lot of times it's on, like, political lines, it, it seems like nowadays. That's, like, one of the lines that um, I don't mind. I don't mind people having different political views. Like, Brian Hill. I am a huge supporter of Brian Hill. I think he's a great writer. I love his work on Angel. Uh, his Killmonger series is amazing. I, I've enjoyed a lot of his comic books. I know that he and I are are very much at, at opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to politics we, we we have different views and stuff like that and he expresses them on 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 social media he expresses them you know in interviews and things like that but that doesn't bother me he, he's completely entitled to to like having his, his political opinions do you think it's strange when people get so um like tied up on somebody else's political beliefs that even if they're they're being polite about it or they're just stating how they feel that that uh, all of a sudden they, they can't separate that from the artist yeah i think it's strange i think brian edward hill I, like i agree with you uh, in regards to brian edward hill um he says some things that i agree with he says some things that i don't uh but i don't use that to define who he is as a person what i use to define who he is as a that who i think he is as a person is the way that he interacts with people and even when he's expressing his opinion even when he's disagreeing with people everything i've seen from brian edward hill is him being respectful and him, you know, saying, well, you know, this is, this is my opinion. This is what I feel. And this is why. And he doesn't seem to get into name calling. He doesn't seem to get into just dismissing people uh, or, or putting people in boxes, which I think is, is to his credit. And so that's why I'm, you know, I'm able to just like really like be a big fan of his, even though we might disagree on some things, but you know what? I don't have to agree with people to love them. I think that one of the things that is nice about, kind of the way that my life has been is that I know people from all different walks of life. I'm not just this comic book professional that's in this box where everybody has kind of like the same opinions and, and it's rigidly enforced. You know, I, I know people who work in the retail industry I know people who work in the entertainment industry, you know, just all, all over the place, you know, manufacturing, I know electricians, I know plumbers, I know police, you know, I just, so I, I'm always like gathering a bunch of different perspectives and it's helped me just kind of, have this idea that, you know, I think I know what's right, but I'm always open to new information. So if someone comes along that has information that I don't have, I will reevaluate my opinion. You know, I will listen to people. And I think we've hit a point where, you know, you've got this group of people who are just in this bubble and rigidly enforcing their belief system. And anybody who steps out of line is canceled. You know, they, they don't have that ability and they're not interested in it. In, they're not interested in cultivating it. Um, and it's 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 pretty sad. Like it used to be that, you know, people could talk about their people could talk about their differences, and you know, maybe it got impassioned, but you know, you could still go get a beer with them at the end of the day and, and be friends. And it just seems like the the more polarized the the country has become, you know, especially since twenty sixteen, it just seems that like there's there's a huge swath of people that aren't willing to to do that anymore. Just thinking about you know some of the interactions that I've seen with people, and this might not even be aimed directly at me, but just to see the way that Dan Slot interacts and generally speaks to people i can never separate the art from the artist at that point he could write the greatest comic book in the history of the world i have a comic book channel and i would never cover it on my channel because he's he has tarnished himself and my opinion of him and the way that he has handled himself is so low that i can't do it now i know it's probably wrong on my part but it's it's, it's there's there are certain lines that i can't cross there, there are certain thresholds that once you go above it, there, there's no coming back. He's one of them. Uh, Ron Mars is one of them. You know, uh, who is it? Is it not? Nah, Bill Sienkiewicz has almost been there. He's towed the line a few. But you get what I'm saying? Some people that, that they just can't, they can't act professional and they just treat people with utter contempt. Even if it's not me, I can't take it. Well, I think that's, I mean, you shouldn't feel bad about that because ultimately you don't owe these people your money. If they are producing something and you know you find them personally distasteful, you find their behavior distasteful, it is perfectly within your rights to say like I don't, you know, I'm not going to support them. I'm, I just I can't even I can't even separate 
you know, them from what they're producing. And I think the problem with some of the people that you've mentioned is that you cannot, you know, you are not allowed to separate them from what they're producing because so much of their personality and their personal beliefs and their personal contempt for the audience and their personal contempt for other Americans that disagree with them, you know, other people around the world that disagree with them, so much of that comes through in their work that it's impossible to separate it. So you wouldn't be able to do it anyway because they're going to slap you in the face with their beliefs e even through the work. I think in the case of uh, in the case of Dan, um, you know, I, I feel I I'm not going to say that. Uh, it's tough for me because I try and have uh, I try and have you know understanding of where people are coming from and and a certain amount of empathy for people. But you know, he just comes and, and I don't know him personally, so you know, I, this may be completely the wrong read. But just based on his behavior, he just seems like a bitterly lonely and unhappy person, and he's lashing out all the time on social media. And it's just kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. I feel I feel bad about it. It's like if you're if you're unhappy and you're lonely, you know, at some point you have to look at yourself and say, maybe I'm the problem. Maybe I'm getting in my own way. And I feel like he's doing that probably in his in his personal life as well as his professional life. And it, it's sad to see. You know, like I said, I, I I could be completely wrong. He could be all sunshine and rainbows in his in his personal life. But his the projection of of what it seems like his worldview is and, and the way that he feels inside and the way he feels about other people doesn't seem to suggest that. And to me, that's, that's probably the saddest thing of all. Yeah. And then there's, you know, maybe the last category of things that I can't really separate, you know, it's hard to separate for the art from the artist is, is your stuff like your Eric Esquivel or maybe your Robbie Rodriguez. A lot of the stuff that was actually that was associated with vertigo comics, when you're talking, you know, allegations of, of, um, using your your position or your authority to maybe to 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 abuse people or talking sending you know pictures of of cornholes to to other artists things like that that's that's when we're that, that's another line where you're starting to get into maybe criminal behavior harassment type behavior for other people it, it's a it's just a line i can't come back from no i agree i you know if you um you know, I'm always willing to, I'm always willing to believe, you know, when people come forward and they, they have allegations that, but I, I'm all, you know, I always want proof, but you know, mm -hmm. once that, once that proof is out, once we see, you know, that, yeah, this is, these are behaviors that these people have definitely engaged in, you know, that people have the receipts on them. I do believe in, in forgiveness for people. You know, I do believe in, in people growing and being able to come back. You know, it's like, I'm certainly not the same person that I was 10 years ago and, and in 10 years, I won't be the person that I am now. Hopefully I'll be much better, but, uh, you know, so I do think that we have to have, you know, have that ability. But in the case of, of things like people who have, you know, committed sexual assault or or used their uh, their position to pressure, you know, uh, uh, somebody else into, you know, sexual favors or, you know, a a anything like that. Like, I, there's just that that person cannot be that, that person cannot be trusted. They should not be in a position of power. And I'm certainly not going to support anybody who's engaged in that behavior. So, I mean, do you have any other, you know, lines that, that you, you won't let be crossed or are we kind of on the same page here? I think we're on the same page. Like I can, I can forgive a lot if, uh, yeah, I, just in general, I can forgive a lot, but, mm -hmm. uh, and if you're, you're talented and you're, you're telling a good story and you know, the, the things that I don't like about you, you're not injecting into the work itself. You're, you're being professional and you're like, how do I tell a good story? And you're approaching the medium from that, that viewpoint. Uh, then, you know, yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of things that I can overlook. But, you know, if you're mistreating people, if you just generally have contempt for the audience that, you know, is <sighs> comic fans. I... Those are my people, man. I go to a comic convention and I talk to people and I genuinely enjoy it. I'm not one of those pros that's like, oh, I got to go talk to the, the great unwashed. You know, you hear like certain pros like with that attitude. And it's like, why are you here? Why are you even here? Like, do you even mm -hmm. do you even like this? Like, do you even like comics or, you know, the fans are, are the lifeblood of comic books. If there weren't people reading these things and appreciating these heroes and enjoying these stories, you wouldn't have a job. And if you can't appreciate those people, if you can't find some common ground, I just I don't know why you would do this. No wonder you're miserable. No wonder you're unhappy and you're lashing out on Twitter. You're in a job that you have contempt for, you know, that is enjoyed by people that you hate. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, very well said, Aaron. I really appreciate your time today. You know, talking about you know, separate the art from the artist. I think we we covered a lot of ground here, and I hope people enjoyed. Is there anything else that you that you needed to say before we wrap this up? 
you and I are in agreement too much. Maybe we need somebody who just like completely disagrees with us so that we can like get a good, get a back and forth going of like, you know, uh, get some hate, some nice, some nice internet drama to boost, uh, <laughs> to boost views. Right. Uh, yeah, no, we but need I, to have some beef. I, I think that, that one of the reasons that I, I started watching your channel, even before I, I had ever interacted with you, uh, was because I just, I came across it. it, it I was watching videos and kind of the background and, you, one of yours started to play, and I was like, "Oh, who is this guy? Kind of, kind of. He's really seems really reasonable and rational. I really like this." And uh, <laughs> and so that I think that's why we can have good discussions is because you know you're you're not an ideologue. You're you're somebody who's willing to listen to people, and and you know you have ideas, but you want to bounce them off people and and get some feedback. And I think that's why your channel is ultimately successful. Well, I do appreciate that, and uh, it's very very kind words, especially coming from someone that I really respect in the industry. Uh, like I said, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it, Aaron. Anytime. Always happy to come on.